Okay, YouTubers, space detectives and armchair astronauts, today I've got a bunch of things to check out. Perseverance Sol 168 Mast Right, okay? Uh, this is a really nice one. Completely raw, nothing done to this. All I did was enlarge it. Uh, it took me a few attempts to get this to work. It's Gigapan. It didn't want to stitch one or two of the images together properly, but I got there in the end. I started it, um, I think, yesterday, and I finally got it to work uh, this afternoon and uploaded it straight away. And you can check this out. This is really cool. The thing that first struck my uh, attention was this, this kind of rectangular rock here. Now, this seems to be made up of, of different rocks stuck together, as if from a wall, okay? And what you have to bear in mind is, is that, as I've shown before, in this particular area, in, in the Jezero Crater, they seem to have been using kind of um, randomly sort of shaped rocks and just chucking them together to build structures from. Um, old school kind of um, masonry, really, stone masonry. Um, but what you can see here is you can see different rocks. You've got one at the top that's split there, one there. So another one here, another one here, one here. You've got a bunch of them. Now, some of these are the same rock that's cracked, like this one. This is one rock here. You can see where there's a natural crack there, right? Because you can tell by the grain and, and the texture that this is one rock because you've got this bit coming through here and it carries on through to here, this texture with the holes and cracks, okay? Now, that means that's one rock at the top. There's a slab there, but these are separate. And you can actually see that this is separate to that and that this is separate to this over here, right? So we've got different rocks placed together, I think with mortar, these are part of what I think is a structure. Now, I can't tell you what the structure is, but if you look at the way that this is split here, you can see where these are joined, okay? In here, you can see the joins. Now, this looks very similar to some of the stonework you might see in South America on Earth, in, in places like Mexico or Peru. And basically, um, I'm not saying it's the same, I'm just saying it's that, kind of age, or much older even. This could be a half a million years old. Um, the chances are it's not that old, because this probably would have disintegrated by now if it was. So I'm saying this is probably 20,000 years old, maybe maybe 100, possibly older, okay? Um, but you can see where it looks like the rocks were placed together, possibly with mortar in between them, right? Which is now eroded away. The mortar in between is eroded away exposing the rocks, the edges of the rock here, but you can actually see where they're interlocking here, right? This interlocking stonework. So the rocks were chosen to fit together. They were probably roughly kind of shaped as well to make them fit better, right? Stuck together with mortar, probably. And what we have here is the remains of a wall, a, a rectangular section of a wall, which is split away here. And you can even see how they're joined here, see that? This one curves down and then up. This is complex stuff going on here. There's another join there, and then one at the bottom. So this looks like stonework. This isn't just a bunch of random rocks, from what I can tell. And there's another one over here. Now, this is an interesting one. Now, this may seem pretty innocuous, but if you look carefully, this rock is not the same as that rock, okay? So this isn't one rock that's cracked. These are two different rocks that have been placed together and fitted. This is fitted stone masonry, okay? It says fitted masonry there. Now, as I've said before, they weren't using square blocks. They were using just kind of randomly shaped rock. Finding, when you build a stone wall, I don't know if you've ever tried this, but I've done it and I, I know stone masons and people that work in the building trade and, and I've known them for many years. And uh, what they do is they, they get sort of decent sized rocks to make a structure like this. And what you do is you work out which ones almost roughly fit together anyway. And then you use a chisel and a hammer to kind of shape them a bit so that they fit a bit better, right? So they're roughly, this, they've got roughly fitting edges. Now this is actually not a rough fitting edge. This is a fine fitting edge, okay? Because that fits perfectly into this one, okay? And it doesn't look like this is one rock that's cracked because you've got a very different shape at the top here, coming in like that. 
and a very different shape at the bottom. Now, if this was one rock, you would expect this to be more uniform along the edges here, and you would expect the grain to match up, but the, the grain doesn't really match, right? And what you've got is a join. This, has been, this looks like it's been cut and joined to this rock here, which says to me this is part of a structure. Unfortunately, we're only seeing that part. We will, in the next couple of days, hopefully get more shots in, in this particular area, and we'll see around this stuff a bit better, and we'll be able to see possibly some more parts of this wall. I actually think this whole thing right round here is a structure, this whole ridge, right? And what we're seeing is parts of the wall or structure that have eroded and cracked and come apart. We've got blocks, a block there and a block there, and each block is made up of smaller blocks, roughly hewn rocks, and then it seems they were stuck together or fitted, okay? I can't actually see any mortar between these, so they may have been dry fitted. In other words, cut and fitted, and then piled up, and more cut and fitted and piled up. But the way that's broken, to me, it looks like it actually may have been cut that way. This may be an entrance here we're looking at. So these may have been fitted and then chiselled away and cut as like a doorway here. Who knows? This could be a doorway, right? So this may be a structure and there seems to be a, a row of rocks back there which may represent the back wall, okay? And we've got another edge to it here. This is much darker here. But this looks to me like these have been placed together rather than just randomly sitting on top of each other. If these were random rocks, why would they fit so well like this? It doesn't make any sense. These have to have been placed at least at some point in the past and a lot of it's fallen down, a lot of it's covered in sand, a lot of it's eroded. These erosion lines here, this is from wind. You see where the wind's blown along this ridge for thousands of years and eroded a lot of this stuff away, okay? So we've got these erosion lines going laterally across the rock, okay? That's what we've got. And some of these look like they were piled on top of each other and fallen down like this one here, and uh, a lot of them look fitted, okay? Like these here, fitted, roughly fitted. Well, I would say pretty well fitted, actually. So this, is, this shows a level of stonemasonry that is uh, pretty good, I would say. Um, it's not on par with some of the ancient stuff we have on Earth, but it's very good. And um, a lot of these rocks, as I've shown before, are cut. They're roughly, they're, they're roughly shaped already. They're picked to be roughly the right shape to go where they need to go. And then they're shaped and then fitted. Okay? That's how it's done. You select the rocks. You, you, you roughly work out how they're going to fit together. And then you make them fit better by chiseling them down and then putting them together. And, of course, on Earth we'd use mortar, but I'm not sure they have here. I can't actually see any but it may have all just um, eroded away because the mortar would be a lot softer than the actual rock itself. So the mortar would erode away, leaving the rocks behind, perhaps, okay? I mean, this may be some mortar down here, I don't know. But um, that's what it looks like. So that was interesting. Um, we've got a nice view here of the, uh, we're looking south, I think, in the Jezero crater. We've got the uh, edge of the crater here, and we've got the hills in the background. But there's loads of these rocks, and a lot of them look fitted but most of them are so broken up and smashed and um, eroded that you can't really tell. Whereas these look very different. These look like they've been stuck together or placed together, fitted into a wall section, which was cut at one end or perhaps chiseled away, whatever, um, for like an entrance or something. So this may actually represent some kind of small doorway or something, okay? So that was interesting. That was the first one. Now, this is one that I showed I haven't shown actually. Um, I did actually show this briefly in a video a couple of weeks ago, but I think it got edited out because uh, the video was so long, I think it was over 40 minutes, and I had to cut it down to sort of about 30, 20 or 30 minutes. So the find I'm showing you now was actually found back then, and I did post this on a bunch of groups on uh, like Facebook groups and stuff, Mars groups. Um, this is Perseverance Rover at Sol 146. 22nd of July, so that was actually a while back now, a couple of weeks back, two or three weeks ago, and this is 
another ape-like humanoid or hominid, I would say. Uh, Proto-human or uh, ape-man or whatever you want to call it, up to you. This is it. And you can actually see two eyes, small eyes, here. One there, one there. Two very large nostrils here and a mouth and a, a slightly pointed head going right up like this. This looks like another ape or proto-human, I would say. I have shown others already uh, on Mars, many, many examples in Gale Crater, and only a few examples so far in Jezero Crater. Here it is. And you can see there's another head here. This, this head, I think, is carved, this one. See an eye there, an eye there, and those coming down and rather a sort of rectangular mouth with a sort of point to the head. That's a carved head, by the looks of it. And this may also be one here, but it seems that this part of it is like, the detail's either been removed or it's just split or eroded away, this part. But this bit, or this, what I would call head or skull, looks like a proto-human. And I have shown some similar ones before, not only in Gale Crater, but on other parts of Mars. Um, in images taken by not only the Opportunity but the Spirit Rover as well and even the Viking lander as well going right back to the 1970s so these are they're not all over the place but some they do they do crop up now and again and this one is quite large I would say you can see it up here um, here's the Rover right how far away is that from this part of the Rover probably 50 or 60 feet away maybe 70 or 80 and it looks quite large and even in the raw image here this is raw nothing done to this if you use the magnifier you see those nostrils that one there and that one there you can see that mouth which got kind of a squiggle to it going along there the top lip you can see that black spot there that's an eye and that black spot there is also an eye and we've got thick heavy brow ridges like you would see on a neanderthal or proto-human or perhaps um, a sort of ape, perhaps, you know. Thick, pronounced brow ridges coming, one there, and the other one comes around like that. We've also got this coming around the side. This may be wearing a helmet or something because it seems to come down like this on the side. Very strange. Um, really weird, really weird. So it's there, and there's loads of other weird stuff in here, but most of it's too far out of visual range to confirm what it is. Um, there's some weird stuff in here that I've marked. So that's Sol 146, so you can check that out yourself. Um, let's quickly do, actually, uh, I'll come back to that in a minute, and what I'll do, I'll draw around that for you and just point those details out a bit more. But if you look closely, you can really see the mouth, the upper lip here, just there. That's the upper lip. Two large nostrils, which are quite f far apart, and two black eyes, one there and one there. Okay, and there seems to be some sort of ear detail there as well on the side. Very strange. It looks like it's eroded and sort of distorted a bit. If this is an actual head, which it may be, and it was mummified, it's probably shrunk in quite considerably in, in parts where it's dehydrated and then preserved in the in the sort of um, in the sulphurous uh, sand, which has preserved it and mummified it. So this may only be thousands of years old, not millions, I would say. Okay. But I'll come back to that and I'll draw around it for you. There's another thing here um, I'm going to show you, which is actually a, an image from the uh, Ingenuity helicopter. And you can actually see the shadow of the helicopter down here, right? And uh, that's it there. This is quite a large image. Now, this is a bit dark, so what you need to do with these images is colour correct them. Now, I use a thing called um, fade correction quite a lot on large images like this. A thing called fade correction. Right, and that's really good if you set it to the right level. Um, you get a color balance, fade correction. You should have this on Photoshop if, if you use that or something similar. Fade correction set to three. There we are. Instantly, now you can actually see what's in the image. Perfect, and uh, it's gone a bit blue, but that's all right. And uh, you can see now what's in the image, and you can actually see the rover up here somewhere. There's the rover. It's quite a long way off, it's about half a mile away or so. And uh, you can see that reflective part there, that's part of the rover there, catching the sun. 
and you can see the, the, the mast cam part sticking up there. And you can just about make out some wheels on the side there, there's black round things. Okay, so there's not much detail to be seen there, but what you can see here is where the rover is by this ridge that I just showed you. We've got this long ridge coming along, and the, the guys at NASA are interested in this ridge because they don't know what it is. And they're trying to make out that it's some kind of um, geological fault or something, but it's not, right? Because I've shown this in, in, in satellite images right before, as you, many of you would have seen. And this is where we are here. I've got a satellite clip here, right? And they, they're they trying to make out this is some kind of um, geological fault, right? I don't think it is at all. This here is where the rover is here, right? Looking at these structures, they look like roads or something, raised roads or perhaps um, uh, irrigation channels, which would have had a wall either side, right? And they're all over the place in Jezero Crater, okay? And we've got these channels, so we've got channels, but we've got a wall either side, like a canal almost, more like a canal than a channel. But then we have these channels here, which look more natural, right? So it's possible what we're looking at here is an either an irrigation system or a system of small canals that were around this area, which was a lake bed at one point. And they may have later on used the canals for moving stuff around. And as I've said before, a lot of these structures in the ground here are actually buildings, okay? So this was the edge of a city. We're on the edge of it now. We're coming off the edge of it. And what we're seeing are some of the either an outer a perimeter defense set of walls perhaps which may have been hollow like a like a, a castle wall which you could probably walk through that's possible or more likely probably a canal or a road going around the edge of the, uh, the city linking up to other parts you can see another part coming down here now i have shown these on on some of my gig plans before on my gig plan site and um you can check them out if you go th go to my main link in the description below. You can check out the links to to my uh, my main Gigapan site, and there's loads of Jezero Crater ones, which you can check out. And you can see these in much better detail. These um, what look like roads or canals all over the place. And other researchers um, like Chris at Mars Anomalies have, have mentioned them, and also uh, John Ward at, at the John John Ward channel as well. He's shown them as well, and we're pretty convinced between us that these are artificial um, at least partly anyway um, but it's whether they're roads or canals or or something else that's the real question okay so that's where we are that's what we're looking at so these walls we're looking at today that I'm showing you in these uh, gigapans may be part of a, of a large system of, of um, either a castle wall which was hollow or a long structure or something like that which was hollow, with a wall either side, which could be explained why there's this long wall back here, dilapidated wall, and then we've got a long wall here, right? Or this could have actually been a canal system of some sort, or irrigation system where water was moved around, or they could have used it for moving themselves or items around with boats or, or um, stuff like that. And incidentally, mentioning boats, let's have a look at this. now. Down here, when you brighten this up like I showed you, there looks to be, a, there's a weird thing here, just here. I don't know what that is. You've got this weird sort of, sort of upside down U-shaped object. That's very odd, I don't know what that is. That may represent some kind of structure. Now, until you enhance the image, you wouldn't even notice it. See what I mean? It's so dark, but when you do that fade correction thing, like I showed you, it really jumps out. And then you start to see other things like this. Now this may be a boat, this thing here, because it seems to have an, an edge there and another edge there and a sort of hollow bit. Now this may either represent some kind of structure, boat-shaped structure, or an actual boat, okay? Bear in mind, like I said, this was a lake, just like Gale Crater. And I found a lot of boats there, boat remains, turn, upturned boats, ruined ships and uh, and, all sorts of weird craft in Gale Crater, which are wrecked and buried, and you can see some of them sticking out of the sand, partly. That may be what we have here, okay? 
these aren't particularly large. This I would say, this thing here, how far away is that? This is probably only about six or so feet long, seven feet. So it's a small boat, if it is a boat. And this is quite a small structure, probably about the same sort of size, about five feet or four feet maybe. Um, weird, it's sort of, uh, I'll do some clips of that and put them in at the end. I'll take clips of these things and darken them up a bit and add more contrast. So there's weird stuff going on here because we've got, we're at the edge of what looks like the city area here. This is the edge. Here's the ridge at the back where the rover is, just there, right? But now we're in this kind of open area where there isn't much here. This looks like a sort of area that would have had water in it perhaps. Uh, because there, there isn't much in the way of structures. It's pretty bare with the odd thing lying around, dotted around. But there are some rocks and stuff buried down here. So who knows, it may just be much deeper sand in this particular area, covering it all up. But there seems to be a sort of channel here, if you look carefully, going this way. Let's add some contrast to that. Let's go dark and see what happens then. I'll add contrast back into the image. And we'll see if we can push out some of these contours like this here. So there's that boat thing there, there's that weird thing there. And we've got these what look like channels in the ground. We've got a load of dunes here which you can now see quite clearly. And then we've got the ridge at the back here where the rover is up here. So there's some weird stuff going on here and as I've said before um, I do think this is the edge of a city or at least a, a large town or something which had hundreds of structures um, and like I said they were making them from oddly shaped rocks not perfectly cut square or rectangular blocks they were using randomly shaped rocks and then modifying them and then fitting them together and this looks like evidence of it because we've got some that are fitted here and are not the same rock that's just cracked you can see that these are two different rocks here because the, the textures don't match up here, okay, and uh, that is a separate rock that's been fitted onto this one extremely well and cut quite finely so that it matches up, okay. This is stone masonry. This is not just random rocks uh, thrown together. They were, they were modified to make them fit better. At least some of them were, especially where you get something like an entrance or something like that. Um, where there had to be something straight, like a door fitted, like there may have been here, there may have been a door fitted here, okay? So we're seeing some interesting stuff here, and uh, once you realise that you can see these things from above, you can actually pick out the rectangles in the ground, and uh, there's, there's an example here that I showed before, or may have not shown before actually, let's, let's, um, let's take a look at that, because you can see in this one, this is another ingenuity photograph that you can see a rectangular wall like structure on the ground. Here's there's a, a well looks like a wall going this way and a rectangular structure right here. You can see a rectangle there. These group of rocks are part of a structure. Rocks do not randomly form rectangles in the ground for no reason. It means they've been built and they've been placed there. Okay? And anyone who used to watch loads of archaeology shows like I did for 20, 30 years um, would know that, that, that generally when you find structures in the ground, this is what they look like from above, okay? Whether they're Roman or Greek or, or Egyptian or whatever, this is what buried structures look like. They look like long lines and rectangles and geometric shapes and circles, hexagons, that kind of thing, okay? And uh, we've got, a, we've got a per, almost perfect rectangle here. Let's brighten this right up so we can see that a bit better. Um, let's go nice and bright. Right, okay. So you can see that there. A perfect rectangle shape of, or formation of a ruined structure, okay? And we've got a part of the structure coming across this way. Now, when things are buried, that's what you see. That is just what you see. And, and having a helicopter on Mars is perfect for spotting this very type of thing. Often on Earth, um, helicopters and, and light aircraft or even gliders are used um, f for spotting in England, for instance, we've got lots of old Roman stuff going, going back a couple of thousand years. And they're often spotted by people when they, when they plough the fields, often, um, or if well, there's been a bit of a drought or something, the, the grass dries out and you can see down through the soil and you can see the walls buried underneath like this. And this is what they look like. Um, let's flip that to negative. Um, 
and have a look at it that way because that might help as well. You can see that rectangular shape there, okay? Almost perfect. This is a bit more random here, it's kind of broken apart. You see it there, and then wall coming across this way. And it looks like there may be a curved structure there as well. So keep an eye on the ingenuity photographs because that's all you've got to do. Brighten them up and then flip them to negative or add a bit of contrast or whatever. You don't have to do a lot with them. Um, they're, they're pretty good. They're large. Um, but it also helps if you blur them a little bit as well because they're usually quite pixelated. There's a couple of other things here. I'll quickly show you those. Now these are all from Sol 146, okay? So I'll put a link down in the description for these. This one is from the, the Super Cam, which is a bit like the Ken Cam on the, on the Curiosity Rover. There's a head here, carved, it looks like, into the rock. You see the nose there. A really, really interesting bit of detail for the mouth and the lips there. You can see the lower lip and the upper lip. There's the eye, really good detail in the eye once you play with the contrast. Here's the raw clip, it's very pale, the raw clip. So you've really got to darken it. You can see all those details, you see the mouth, the lips there, you can see the nose there, and the eye there. But this is weird. This looks like some kind of carving of, maybe, a, well, it's a, of a person. I don't know what that person was, whether they were some kind of god or deity or leader, who knows? Interesting, right? Look at that. So if you look carefully, you can see this eye here. nose, nostril, and fine lip detail. It's the mouth, joint, and the lip comes up like that. Okay. I can even see in there pupil and iris detail. There's the iris. Lid. Lower lid. So there's some fine detail to be seen in some of these images, okay? They're good quality, and they're not downgraded too much, most of them. Um, in fact, the uh, uh, these Supercam ones are not downgraded at all. They're a bit fuzzy, but they're good, right? Because they haven't been screwed with. So the, the details are all there. So that was interesting. So that's from the Perseverance Rover 146 um, Supercam. So I'll put a link to that Gigapan in the actual description as well. And these are from the same day, but from the normal camera, which is the, the mask cam, okay? This is, uh, oh, hang on a minute. No, this is super cam as well, this one. So this is, I think, from the same Gigapan as this, all right? And this thing, now, this is really odd because I think this actually may, may be a carving of a person or some kind of weird animal. Because what we have here is a head But we've got a body here with the groin. Here's a leg with a foot. Here's the other leg here. This is Sol 146. Now, I didn't cover this in a video before, so these are all new things. I've marked a couple of things on here, and that thing I'm just showing, I was just showing you there is right here. Really odd. I've been looking at this for a while. We've seen this in lots of images from different cameras. And uh, it looks like a body here. If you, look, if, you, if you think of this as a body, and that's the groin, and two legs, and an arm, and this weird head, which seems to have holes in it for eyes, one there, one there, and a mouth there, but a weird thing on top of it here sticking up. Really strange stuff going on here. And it reminds me some sort of a bit like some of the uh, things you might see on Easter Island, you know, really weird. Um, very strange indeed. There's also this thing over here, not sure if it's a skull or not, it's very odd, really weird. Some of these are just really, really strange things. And uh, that head in the rock, I think is up on this one here, just there. You can see it there, look. And you can see the mouth, see the magnifier. See the mouth there with the lips? There's the nose, and there's that eye. Now once you see that eye, you can, if you look carefully, you can see an iris there, a round iris just there. So there's some fine work going on here. 
not only were they cutting the blocks to fit each other really well, but they were also doing some fine chiseling work on the rock to carve these faces and heads and strange things. And there's another weird thing here. Now that may look just like a rock, but it's got two eyes. It's got one there and one there. And a mouth there. And this is the snout with nostrils. I don't know what it represents. Some kind of creature we don't know. Very strange. If I use the magnifier, and just about make out a roundish eye there. You can even see the iris. And there's another one just there. There's a round eye there. Okay. So it's some weird stuff going on here, and a lot of it represents animals that I don't really understand or things I don't understand. But you've got to keep your mind open. If you keep an open mind, then you will find stuff. If you don't, you won't. And this one was weird. This has got these weird teeth on it, this thing here. This may be a skull. It's got these weird teeth there. Let me show the magnifier. See that? Strange teeth. This was weird because if you look at this, it looks like an, like two eyes. Now this may be an optical trick or just kind of matrixing or pareidolia, whatever you want to call it. But it's got a, a kind of mouth there and a sort of nose here, right? But there's this weird thing sticking up at the top, which I don't really understand here. Which looks like it might be a, a head with an ear and a nose here and an eye and a mouth, which I've only just realised, actually. Very, very weird stuff. Like a totem pole, almost, where you've got heads on top of each other. And uh, a body down here. Now, this looks like a head, this whole thing. And this looks like an arm. Like I said, this looks like a groin. And legs, like that. We're seeing it from an angle here. We're not seeing it from the front. But if you look really carefully, just in here, there's like a weird head with these weird sort of round things on it, like an egg shape. With two circular parts, like that. Which may represent a baby or a child. So it may, this may actually be a, a carving of a, of a weird sort of um, fertility god or something, with a child or something like that, who knows? It's like a totem pole. We've got a head at the top. Let's get rid of all that. Now, if I darken it, some of that may come out better. So let's go dark. And uh, the shadows should pop a bit more. We'll lose some detail, but we'll gain other detail. So this looks like a head at the top, very narrow. With a chin there. Nose. And an ear. Just make me count an ear. And there's an eye there and what looks like another eye just there. And a mouth there. Very strange, okay. But this is Mars. Don't expect to understand it straight away. Don't expect to like it straight away either. A lot of this stuff's very spooky. A lot of it's weird. A lot of it's quite grotesque and ugly. But um, a lot of it's heavily eroded and damaged, so it may have been much nicer when it was made. Okay. <laughs> so this... This may be a body here. I may be getting this completely wrong. This may be an actual body. But it looks like two eyes here. And a nose and a mouth. Right? And it sort of comes around like that. And then we can see, now we can see that egg shape appearing now. We've darkened it. Just there. With two circular parts. We've got some weird details in here and this here. This looks like a leg and a knee and a foot. So this is a bit like bears. Now, I've shown carvings and, and little statuette things in Gale Crater that look a bit like bears. Now, bears was an ancient god, or not really a god, a sort of demigod type um, figure that was kind of worshipped in ancient Egypt and was, and it was like a little bear. And uh, this is where we get teddy bears from. People think we get teddy bears from Teddy Roosevelt because he, he was called Teddy, right? That's nonsense. The, the bear thing goes right back many thousands of years to early Egypt. And uh, bears was like a little bear figure, a lucky bear, right? 
and you would have a carving of this bear and you put him in your doorway, the, the entrance of your house, and he would guard you against evil spirits. This is where a lot of gargoyles are there taken from. They're there to protect you from evil, okay? They may look evil, but they're there to scare away the, the, the evil, the more evil ones. It looks similar to bears or something like that, where you have a, a sort of proto-human sort of bear-like figure um, with an oddly little stunted dwarf-like body and uh, funny features, you know. And it, it, they're kind of cartoonish looking in a way. So they were kind of lucky, lucky demigods, okay? And the word, and in fact, the word demon actually comes from demi, meaning lower. This may represent some kind of weird demigod, okay? That's, this is the other leg, I think. Possible knee detail there. And this kind of looks like an arm or hand here. Really weird, but we're seeing it from a funny angle, so it doesn't make a lot of sense. But if you can imagine that, like a little child's body, almost like a doll-like body, and um, what may represent a baby or something in the middle there, who knows? Very strange. I'll um, take some more clips of that, maybe, and put them in at the end. So all this I'll, I'll show again later anyway, at the end of the video. Let me just show you that very quickly. The, um, the proto-human or ape-man similar to others I've shown, and what I'll do at the end of the video, I'll put some others I've found next to this one. And some of them look a bit like Bigfoot or in the Yeti, some of them look more like proto-humans or, or like Neanderthals. Some of them look like Cro-Magnon, some of them are very, very large skulls, some of them look like the elongated skulls in South America, in places like Peru and Mexico and ancient Egypt. So we have a whole mixture, a whole mixed bag of stuff going on here when it comes to the evolution of people on um, Mars. Some of them look like proto-humans, some of them look more ape-like, and some of them look human, like we do, okay? Modern humans. So there's a whole mixed bag of stuff going on there, just like we have, have here on Earth and had here on Earth, okay? So let me just point out those details real quick, and then we'll call it a day, because this is taking far too long, as usual. Um, but basically, you can actually see a mouth here, which is kind of crinkly, nostril, Nostril, eye, eye, heavy brows that come right round like this. Those are the brows. Ear, chin, cheek coming up there. And what seems to be some kind of hat or helmet coming right up over the top. This may be the edge of it here. And we're not seeing all of it. This looks like something off Planet of the Apes. If you can imagine one of those gorilla type uh, warriors wearing the helmet. It's insane. Absolutely insane. And it's not the first, okay? So this may seem crazy to those of you that are first viewing this channel now. But wait till you see the other things I've found. There are loads of weird heads in helmets. A lot of them look human. Some of them look like other types of aliens, perhaps. But there are also apes that wearing helmets that I've shown. So these were kind of intelligent apes, proto-humans, who were possibly fighting amongst themselves or fighting the humans on Mars. And uh, there are also reptiles and things as well, reptoids, which were kind of reptilian, I should say. So there was a whole mixed bag of things going on, and they may, come, may have came from other planets and, and used it as a battleground. Mars may have been used for many thousands of years for other civilizations to go to, to fight. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, and obviously there were people living there who probably got embroiled in all this stuff. So who knows what really happened? So there we are. It, it's another ape man or proto-human, okay? That's what it is. And the reason why you've got this crinkle pattern here on the mouth is because there would be large teeth behind that forcing the lips, to, when they shrink, to go over the teeth. So there would be a large tooth there, a large tooth there, a large tooth there. So this would have had large teeth, uh, large irregular teeth, like I've shown on some of the other proto-humans I've shown on Mars. And I've, I've spotted them now on all parts of Mars, okay? And some of them look like gorillas, some of them look more like lemurs, some of them look more like proto-humans, kind of almost Neanderthal. 
or Cro-Magnon. Um, and they've got large, irregular teeth, a lot of them. And some of them are really big, like much bigger than this, and look like trolls with massive teeth, shark-like teeth, okay? Twice the size of this, like right out like this, okay? More like this size. So this may represent, this one here in the middle may represent one, but there's no detail left on this part. It's all gone. So either that's been scrubbed, the detail's been scrubbed out, or it's just eroded off or split. This may be part of it down here, who knows. And um, incidentally, that other head here, which looks more like a carving, it's, it's similar to sort of like what you would see in Rome, some of the carvings there. Got a rectangular mouth, got a nose there, comes up like that, there's an eye there, and an eye there, okay? And it's quite square at the bottom. And uh, some kind of interesting details up here. So that's pretty vague. In fact, I'll brighten it up for you, and then that will show up more. Okay, if I brighten it, let's go bright. Because that's a bit dark to see in the shadows. There we are. You can see now that nose, mouth, eye, eye, and the head sticking up, okay? Unfortunately, it's kind of hidden behind this one here, which I also think represents a skull or a head. But, as I said, all this is gone. Nothing there. So it's either been scrubbed by NASA or just eroded or split. Okay? So we've got a whole bunch of things here. A complicated one, that. But this, this was one of my favourite things recently. It's hard to get your head round. But to, that's what it looks like to me. This looks like a head on top with another head below or body. And then a body here with the groin here, and you can really see from this distance that egg shape with the two eyes, the two round eyes there, okay? You can really see that. And uh, let me flip it to negative, and that should actually really come out. Yeah, you can see that shape there, okay? And there's something else going on here. So. I'll put clips of these up with different edits and stuff for you so you can see the raw and the enhanced one and everything else. And uh, you can also cross-reference it with the, the Gigapan course to see that this stuff's here. And um, this looks pretty good in the Gigapan as it is, this one. There's a lot of detail in here. And uh, you can see that kind of weird egg shape with the two eyes. So lots of weird stuff going on here. I don't really fully understand what all of these things represent, like this thing here looks like a skull but of some kind of creature we don't understand maybe, or just maybe a, a, something that looks a bit like a skull, who knows? There seems to be a mouth with teeth in it there. Keep your eyes peeled. Thanks for watching everybody. Clips coming up now.